morning. So in this video, we're going to focus on a really basic break-even analysis for a simple pepperoni pizza. And in this video, um, what we're going to do is walk through um, a conceptual a conceptual pizza and how much it would cost to actually make one. And so you'll notice that I have a couple of items up here already. Um, fixed cost, variable cost for each. Clearly there takes more to run a pizza shop, but um, you know we're gonna charge this fixed cost for rent. Other fixed costs would include stuff like uh, labor or insurance, advertising, utilities, etc. cetera. Uh, and then there's a variable cost per pizza. So for each pizza that we make, it costs us $225 in dough. And there's other variable costs for pizza, but we're just going to keep this one real simple. And then we're going to make a simple pepperoni pizza. So one item, it's uh, 85 cents per pizza in pepperonis is what it's going to cost us. And so the very first thing that we're going to do, and as you know, a pretty spreadsheet is a clean spreadsheet. So I'm going to come up here and put two double lines because I like double lines, uh, bottom double border. All right, is so we're going to do a totals line where we're going to sum sum equal sign and the sum gives me the opening for my uh, for my equation and you can see here that I want to add the sum of b4 to b6 or everything that's above me and it gives me the total for that one the same thing for my variable cost so I'm going to do my variable cost and I'm going to equal them to the sum of all of the stuff that is variable so for those of you who have never seen a um, a uh, break-even analysis before or the difference between the fixed cost and the variable cost the fixed costs are the cost that we cannot that you have to pay outright you have to pay them so stuff like rent or whatever are costs that even if you produce zero pizzas you still have to pay rent um, however you don't have to produce the variable cost for all, you have to pay variable costs only when you produce that one pizza. So one pizza is two dollars and twenty-five cents in dough, and it's eighty-five cents in pepperoni. The second pizza also cost me two twenty-five in dough and eighty-five cents in pepperoni, but it doesn't increase my fixed costs. So if I make a hundred pizzas or a million pizzas in this one space, I still pay the same rent. However, my total variable cost would increase. So this guy right here stays the same, and this guy here is going to increase by the total number of, um, of pizzas that we, that we make. So you'll see that I've got a couple of equations over here on the left that are very standard uh, economic equations. I put them there for your reference. These refer to... Um, sales and uh, break even, you know, assuming that break even occurs when profit equals zero. We'll talk about that in a minute and how we calculate those profits. Something's wrong there. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's go and calculate how much it would cost to construct just one pizza. So I'm going to say number of pizzas, and this is where Excel starts to really does, you know, uh, really starts to pull its weight. And we're going to say, we're going to start with just one pizza. Well, what is the total cost, the total cost of manufacturing one pizza? Well, this is going to be equal to my fixed costs plus my variable costs, C7, notice that I've added them up already, times the total number of pizzas that I've included. So B7 plus C7 times 815, and it's going to be 1500 Now, that would be ridiculous to make pay $1,500 for just one pizza, but you can see here that that's how I calculate my total costs. All right. So let's do 100 pizzas, 1,000 pizzas, and 10,000 pizzas. Now, you know, let me zoom in a little bit here so you guys can get a better idea of what I'm looking at. Yeah, let's erase all of this. Let's scoot this up a little bit. Let's shift cells up. There you go. Now we can. Now you can see a little bit better. I want one more line. There you go. One more line. Thank you. All right. Okay. So here we can do a couple of different things. We can, since we're doing this cell plus this cell times this one, we can copy down 
but we have zero calculation. How come? Oh, it looks like my blue lines have shifted down when everything else have shifted down. So what I want to do is introduce, if you haven't done this already, my dollar sign functions. You can do this by hitting the button F4, and you'll see that we're going to lock B7 by putting dollar signs in front of the B and the 7. Same thing for C7. I want to lock that one in place so that when I copy down, Control D, or I can just copy and then paste it down here. Copy, let's try that again. Copy, <laughs> let's try that again. Just the one cell, thank you. Let me hit escape. Copy, thank you. Paste it here. Just regular paste. It's still 1503, how come? Well, I've copied and pasted the value, not the equation. Well, something, somehow I did something wrong there. Let's go back and do this again. Equals this guy, F4, because I want to lock it, plus the cost of the single pizza, F4, because I want to lock it, plus A11, and that's... Oh, I don't want to multiply that. I want to multiply it. Okay, back to normal. This cell, total my fixed cost plus the variable cost times the total number of pizzas. Okay, now we're in a good place. Now when I copy this one and paste it here, it increases the total cost by the total number of pizzas. You can see that this two cells stay locked, but I have scrolled down to the next purple cell and so on. I can do a control D for control down and we go to total variable rates. Now the great thing about Excel is that here we've made a mistake. I've wanted this to be not 1,000, but 10,000, and I have my variables in place. I can come back and do 10, 1, 2, 3, hit enter, and it will calculate out the cost for 10,000 pizzas. And so we can get a good look at to see how much it's gonna cost me to do all the pizzas in total. Now I might be interested in the cost per pizza, so what would we do here? We would take the total amount of pizzas, or the total cost for all the pizzas, and divide it by the total number of pizzas that we're making. So here it's gonna be 1,503. Well, that's ridiculous, but it makes sense because there's only one pizza, and that can do the same thing here. In this case, I don't have to lock anything because I want all of these to scroll down as I scroll down. So I'm gonna do Control D, or you can also do Fill Down. And that's more like it. Now, 460 a pizza, 325 a pizza. Now we're talking. Now I can looks like I can make some profit here. So, what do I do next in my break-even analysis? The next thing I need to figure out is my cost per pizza. I got that. I need to figure out how much I'm going to charge per pizza to break even. Well, here we can just make some random number and let's put it over here. Uh, price of a pepperoni pizza, price of the pizza, and let's make the price of the pizza uh, $10, right? $10, let's turn that into a dollar sign, because we like that. It's highlighted in some color, so we know that it's, it's a price. There's the price of the pizza. Here's the cost of the pizza. Excellent. So now, the price of the pizza doesn't change, but I wanna know how much am I doing in sales for the different number amounts of the pizzas. Okay, so let's go back to sales and calculate them. Well, how much am I doing in sales if I sell one pizza? If I sell one pizza, I multiply it by my price and I get $10. So clearly I'm gonna lose money there. So here we have the same issue from before and I wanna be smart about the way that I handle Excel because you know mathematicians are lazy. We don't wanna do any heavy lifting. So I'm going to come in here and do my dollar signs. Again, I can hit F4 and it'll lock that one cell, but I want the A11, the blue one, to go up and down as I copy down, okay? You can copy, paste, Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V. You can also do the Control down and now I get total sales. All right, excellent. If I sell one pizza, I'll make 10 bucks. If I sell 100, I'll make 1,000. If I sell 1,000 1, pizzas, I'll make 10,000 and so on. Now I know that you can just look at total cost. Let's highlight this in a very light red, something very, or light orange, something like that. And do this guy in a very light green, something like that. I know that you can look over here and say, hey, once I get to 1,000, I'm making money. All right, excellent.
fantastic. And what I, what's really going to happen here is I need another uh, insert. So I went up to the top, I highlighted the entire column, right click, insert, and I get a little bit more space. E. Oh no, but it's formatted inappropriately. That's okay. You highlight this guy, you hit normal, everything goes back to normal. No problem. Let's center these guys just to keep it pretty. As long as we're, as long as we're being pretty. Okay. So I know that you can figure out here kind of quickly that by the time you get to a thousand pizzas, you're making some money. But we haven't really used done some heavy lifting here. Let's figure out now what my actual profit is going to be. How do I calculate profit? Profit is going to be equal to, and it's calculated up here when we do some break-even analyses, the total sales minus the total cost, not on a per pizza basis, but for the entire month. So I'm losing money if I only sell one pizza. Let me do a control down so we see the other one. I'm losing money if I sell 100. I'm making money if I sell 1,000. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And it's one of the big things that we're going to do here that's different from your economics class or from your operational management class when you use these equations. And you can do this. You can use Excel to calculate all of these equations. And that's great. But we're going to do some heavy lifting so that we can do some modeling. All right. So I know I need to go from 100. I'm going to go up to 1,000. And we're going to do all the same stuff that we did here. But let's go ahead and do exactly. Start with 100. And let's do this by tens or by twenties or by fifties. Let's do these by twenties. One twenty, one forty, and so on. Now, I love this uh, bottom right hand corner. You can see how down here in the bottom it's got a little fat uh, corner, the fat box in the corner. Once you set a series here on the left hand side, I can grab this corner and just drag it down. I drag it down all the way to like a thousand. Because we know that once we get to 1,000, we're making money, right? So by 20s or by 10s, you can drag it down. It'll fill the entire thing, okay? Now, this is really lovely. Um, I'm going to delete these two rows just so that we have a place to continue. And then you can just put continuation here, continuation, or oh, that's not how you spell it. Continuation. Maybe that is how you spell it. And so we're just going to do all the same stuff we did before because all we did was fill down here, right? The total cost is going to go here. As a matter of fact, let's just do this. Control C and bring it down here so that we can continue to have our total sales, total cost, cost per pizza, sales, and profit. And we can do an analysis of where we break even. The break even analysis is there to show you how many pizzas you have to make in order to get back the original investment or in order to get back the cost for constructing those pizzas. So that is your bare, bare minimum. And that means you make zero profit. So what I'm looking for is zero profit. I'm looking for this number to turn to zero. Right now it's negative between 100 and 1,000. Okay, so let's take our 100 and just copy paste that bad boy. Control C, Control V, everything looks pretty good. And if you notice, my dollar signs are still locking up my cells, right? But I've also using the 16, so it copies to the row. So now I've got all of these on the row. And then let's go back and highlight all of them and use this beautiful little uh, uh, green bottom corner. Click and drag this guy down. Ugh, and it's already filling in for me. You can see the profit's already going down. Here's the biggest secret that you should learn today for future calculations. This little green square, if I double click it, click, click, it fills all the way down all of this row, all the way down to the bottom. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. Now you see that I don't have to sell a lot of pizzas in this scenario to break even. I have to sell not 200, but about 220. Okay. Now a classic, let me change that from, I want to make it super green instead of, and bold, so you can see it there. That is my break even. Now, a classic economist, or a, uh, a professional operational manager is going to look at this and be like, well, that's not how you calculate. You have to calculate the zero. Okay, fine. You have to calculate the zero. And you can do that with a pen and pencil. But with Excel, you can get a really nice approximation and some model estimates where you can say, hey, look, this is the point at which we can break even. And it tells me that my cost per pizza can get down to $9. Well, I don't want it at $9. I want it much less than that. So I want to sell a lot more than 220 pizzas as much as possible. But if you're looking for funding or if you're looking for confidence in starting a business, you tell yourself, hey, I got to sell 220 pizzas. Well, what's 220? 220 pizzas, if I work all every day, all month, means I have to sell seven pizzas a day in order to break even on the month.
Okay. These are the types of calculations that you're going to do on a regular basis. Um, and this is the, the initial brainstorm that we do this. Before we go, let me, number, let me change this to number of pizzas real quick. Number of pizzas. Let's turn around and do something kind of fun here. I'm going to highlight the entire row and use the buttons Control Shift Down to highlight all five columns. And let's go over to Insert. And let's see what Recommended Charts gives us. Recommended Charts gives us some beautiful curves here. I like some of these. Let's use this first one. Very nice, beautiful curve here. That's a nice curve. Chart title. Let's name this Pizza Break Even Analysis. Uh, somewhere right about 220 is where my total cost and my sales coincide. So that's going to go to zero. My profit increases. Oh, it's a parallel of the other one, sort of. It's not. It's a modification because it's this one minus this one. That's why it's not the same slant. But you know what? I don't really need this orange one. The cost per pizza, it's just an orange line. It's just kind of getting in the way. So I'm going to change that and make this a little, a little more. Oh, well. Didn't get what I wanted here. But the point is, oh yeah, I misspelled pizza. Let's go back here to pizza. Pizza break your analysis. So the point is that we have our curves that are of trivial, of, of, of actual importance to us. Total sales minus total cost gives us profit. Notice how we are negative. Right, this is zero. We are negative in profit up until 220. So we're looking for this place where these two coincide. And likewise, when these two coincide, our profit line is going to break above zero. So we need 220 to make whatever we need to make. If you want to make, say, $4,000 a month net, then you need to be selling, follow it all the way to here, 780 pizzas per month. And then you can make all sorts of other daily calculations based upon that. All right. So go back to the video, make sure you understand this point. You can always come back here and make this pretty uh, by changing the formats of whatever you want. Uh, oh, that one's kind of nice. It shows the overlap points. People seem to like the black ones. So there you go. Enjoy. Have fun. See you next time.